In an unprecedented case of political repression, nearly 200 people are facing six or more felonies and two misdemeanors, including inciting to riot, rioting, conspiracy to riot, and property destruction for protesting Trump's inauguration. On January 20th, Inauguration Day, tens of thousands of people from all walks of life, women, indigenous folks, Black Lives Matter and environmentalists, use blockades, marches, street dance parties, and other creative tactics to disrupt the celebration of Trump's first day as president. Meanwhile, during an anti-capitalist, anti-fascist march, the police encircled protesters and closed off a whole city block. Protesters stood on a corner for nine hours in a police kettle, and DC cops eventually arrested over 230 people. All 230 waited in the cold without food, water, medical attention, or bathrooms, and cops continued to assault them with projectiles and chemical weapons. The U.S. Attorney's Office is prosecuting this case in a way never seen before. People charged faced up to six decades in jail. Cell phones were confiscated and searched, seized and hacked. Social media data was mined, particularly through Facebook and Apple account subpoenas, and the Department of Justice issued a warrant for all website visitor information to disrupt J20.org. The D.C. police handled protesters on January 20th in a way that no one expected. The police complaints board found that Washington cops violated several of their own codes of conduct. A lawsuit by the ACLU states that individuals were grossly mishandled and physically violated. The police threw over 70 sting ball grenades at protesters over the course of the day. Despite all of these circumstances, there has been an astonishing display of legal solidarity with almost 200 people committed to fighting these charges and are choosing to go to trial instead of accepting plea deals. The prosecution knows that the case is constitutionally flawed. The indictment bases its case on these activities, marching, wearing black, chanting, fuck capitalism. Defense attorneys have argued that nearly 200 people are being held responsible for the same five counts of property destruction, and prosecution is attempting to redefine conspiracy to include dressing alike and vague association. The same prosecutorial trend is being applied to Black Lives Matter and environmental protectors, and an increasing number of people are being charged with felony rioting. This felony tactic is a new attempt to defeat protests that are expressing outrage at presidential policy, corporate pipelines, racism, and police brutality. J20 is essentially a J20 trials begin in November 2017 and will stretch all through 2018. But how we support the J20 defendants will determine how effectively anyone can march, rally, organize, protest under the Trump administration. Turning protest into a felony offense is dangerous for anyone who believes in resistance. Don't let them scare our movements into silence. Donate now to fund this historic fight. Defend J20 resistance.org slash support and find us on social media at Defend J20.